Hello again, this is the second part of my video tutorial, the first one in the new year 2012, and it's on setting up a 3D wood scene. And as you can see here, this is my final result, my endeavors to just try to have some 3D, 3D trees um, configured like this and standing on some sort of terrain. And the main task was to achieve uh, rather sound render times, <coughs> keeping control over all these parameters to a have it rendered in reasonable time. So in my first part I showed you how to basically set up a scene like this using the cloner tool and the random effector and I was using dummies for the trees, I was using cylinders as you might remember and this time we are growing real trees and it's one tree, one original 3D tree, it's coming from XFrog it's a ready-made tree from this Europe one library, tree library I bought and I'll show you how to handle this, put it inside my scene, and have it cloned like this, and so on. Okay, let's turn to... Um, this was the picture view, and let's turn to this fresh scene. You can see the plane. As I showed in the first part, uh, you can take a normal plane and tweak it around a little bit to have it sculpted like a real terrain. And what you can see is when you hit render that it's um, you know, looking some sort of real terrain. And again, you can sculpt it the way you want to via using the point mode and using the magnet tool and moving it around the way you want to with a larger radius, of course. And sculpt it whatever way you like. Okay, so, but this is not what I want to show you here. Um, this is my basis, and now I'm, I want to set up a V ray scene. This is not a V-Ray scene in the first place, this is just a normal Cinema 4D scene, though the material of my plane is a V-Ray material, as you can see here. And I'm talking about this later on, how I did compose this and so on. But first of all, let's do the basic steps to set up a V-Ray scene. First of all, hit Command B or Control B, and you're inside your render settings. Don't bother about my different looking layout. <coughs> As you might know, you can configure your own layout, and this is just one personal layout of mine. So you can decide for the V-Ray Bridge Renderer. And in this V-Ray Bridge Renderer, just keep everything as it is. Uh, besides this Indirect Illumination tab, just activate GI and choose, or I choose, um, Very Fast Outdoor. This is just the basis to, um, you know, sample down from later on because, as you might imagine, 3D trees and especially the leaves take a lot of render time. But basically, this is to keep it simple. This is the basis to start from. Okay, GI is on. A preset is very fast outdoor, and I leave everything as it is. Okay. So now we've got the V-Ray renderer on, and then we need some V-Ray light, of course. And as I did show in my daylight lighting, daylight render video, this is just done by a normal outdoor lighting. is normally done by just having one light source from Cinema 4D and assigning a V-Ray light tag. And in the V-Ray light tag, I decide for an infinite light, which casts shadows. Okay. And this infinite light is turned into a physical sun and skylight in the sunlight tab, checking physical sun and physical sky, leaving everything else as it is. Okay, so this is just two light sources combined in one. And as you might remember from this video, please have a look at this if you don't remember. This um, V-ray light is coded, so the amount of sunlight and diffuse physical skylight is um, corresponding to the angle the light has. So when I have my light coordinates put to let's say minus 45, which doesn't have any influence on my light color, but then on a downward angle like minus 45, this counts for a specific set of colors for, uh, of the light and also the intensity of the sunlight physical sun and the intensity of this diffuse physical skylight. Okay, let's check again. Common, infinite, 
enable shadows and under sunlight physical sun is activated and physical sky is activated okay and don't forget the coordinates have to be something like they should uh, would be in reality especially this one is crucial this has to be a minus value so the light is coming from from the sky and pointing downwards okay so when i have a v-ray light and a v-ray render scene i of course also have to assign a V-Ray camera tag to my um, normal Cinema 4D camera and as you might know, as you surely know, you can use real-life parameters for the exposure and the light, light amount of the scene, like film ISO 100, f-stop 8 and shutter speed 200. Now we've done the three basic steps, setting up the V-Ray render engine in the render settings deciding for global illumination or indirect illumination, having a V-ray light as a sunlight, coming as a sunlight, and a V-ray camera. Okay, so let's hit Render, Command-R or Control-R. So this takes rather a long time. And this is only the terrain, this is not 3D trees. So you might think we should do something about this. Okay, this is taking much too long, way too long. Yeah. You know that you have to do so many test renderings and you have to find a way to really sample this down extremely because this is way too long. Okay, so let's hit Command B, Control B, and do something. First of all, deactivate the anti aliasing or to put it better to deactivate the adaptive DMC sampler and replace it by fixed. What the adaptive DMC does, it adapts the resolution imposed on calculating the anti-aliasing on the amount of detail. So when you've got in an architectural visualization, you've got huge pieces of walls and as you might know, there is no use of um, calculating anti-aliasing on a huge even plane. So um, V-Ray um, samples its resolution down on those even huge places. It concentrates on the very detailed parts. So again, when I have a wood scene like this and it's only detailed parts to be calculated and no smooth even parts at all, the adaptive doesn't make that much sense, at least not for test renderings. So when you've got fixed, it's the same poor amount of subdivision imposed on every pixel. So, um, just to make this clear, let's render this again. And it looks like being rendered much faster. And as you can see, it's on my computer, it's taking 12 seconds. Okay, back to the render settings. Going to the DMC sampler. This is an overall quality parameter set. It's very little parameters to keep care of. And the most crucial one is the noise threshold. So when you put this noise threshold from its default value 0 0.01 to 1 and have it rendered again, you'd see that it's not taking 12 seconds. Well, it's taking 12 seconds. <laughs> taking exactly the same amount of time. But again, later on, when we've got much more detail, it'll uh, have an influence. It doesn't seem to have an influence right now. Okay, so the next thing, we were dealing with the anti-aliasing in the DMC sampler. We now um, are looking on the GI parameters. In this preset, very fast auto, we have for the first bounces irradiance map calculation, and for the second bounces we have brute force. Mapping. So we, what can we do in the irradiance mapping parameters? Minimum and maximum rate, hemispheric subdivision and interpolated samples. These are the four values which can be uh, sampled down. So let's use, for example, minus 20, minus 20. And for hemispheric subdivision, we choose 30. And for interpolated sample, we choose 10. Okay. So let's stick to some small changes every time we do something to make it have it better understood and have it rendered again. Here we are. A 
Now it's nine seconds, three seconds less. Okay, and it doesn't look worse than the other one, I think. Let's try something more. Let's have a look on the <coughs> on the brute force settings. Subdivision eight. Let's put this to um, to one. And let's see what happens. We had nine seconds before that. And it's still nine seconds. Okay. So this doesn't appear to have a major influence on my image. So then, next thing, before I want to import a tree, I would like to care for a nice image format. And as you could see in the beginning, it was a square format, and I would like to have this in. So it's 600 by 600 pixels. This is um, very crucial to decide in the beginning because you know the picture is calculated inside the camera cone inside this picture frame. So when you decide for a smaller window uh, picture frame, it's better for your test renderings and render times, of course. So now this is, <coughs> of course, a little bit faster now because it's less pixels to render. And it's six seconds, okay? There is one last thing we might um, de-check for the moment, and this is ambient occlusion. This again is something which is very crucial for a good image, but also something which we can, you know, um, avoid during testing our scene. And it's found under the general uh, indirect illumination tab under general. It's not under the irradiance map settings, it's just under general and it's ambient occlusion and we can de-check it for the moment. And again, we've got a very simple scene up to now, but when we've got some 3D trees, this might have a big influence. We had six seconds with the last rendering, and now we should be a little bit faster. Yeah, it's still six seconds, but I know it's, uh, it's going to be faster later on. Okay, so now we've got our scene ready. We've got our lighting, um, we've got our camera, and we've got we think we did all to sample down render quality as um, good as possible. So now it's time to place our first tree. And I said already I want to take a ready-made tree coming from Xfrog. Xfrog is a very powerful plugin to grow your own trees, but then it's then again it's rather elegant and and comforting to have some ready-made ones. Of course you've got to buy them. There's some free on, on their page, you have to look for this, but this is uh, bought. Um, this is Europe 1 and it's a collection of European trees and I would li uh, like to take this Tilia platyphilos and taking this guy right here. I'm using my content browser of course. I, I set up a catalog of myself, a tree catalog, and I just drag it to my scene. And as you can see the tree is coming into my scene. It's a group, a null object containing a lot of elements and the materials are coming along with it. So when we switch to our viewport again we see a very 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 small tree. And when I click on my null object and um, have um, Take a look in my co coordinates manager. I see that this, this is only two meters high. This is way too small, and I would like to scale it up. Let's say times eight. Whoop! And here we are. So now I move this little guy up. You see, it's coming with roots and some stuff around its roots and so on. Very nice. I for it. Uh, like to switch my camera off. This is the way it looks. Rather nice and as you can see you can switch it off completely and then again you can switch on that's for example the trunk and you can see this is the trunk and these are the roots and so you know how to handle this guy because 
you don't have to have a look at all those items, which makes it rather hard for the editor, the viewport, to render in the first place. So mm, just make it visible again and uncheck activate my camera again. And I would like to render this now. And as you can see, and as you might imagine or expect even, this it doesn't look like a real tree because the texturing is not okay. The textures are Cinema 4D textures, not V-Ray textures. And as I told you before, and as you might know already, um, anyway, you can, you should convert the material, normal Cinema 4D material attached, assigned to objects into V-Ray materials via the plugin V-Ray Bridge Material Converter. You don't have to activate anything, just choose this command and every single Cinema 4D material in your scene is converted into a V-Ray material. And then additionally, every texture assignment is replaced by this new V-Ray material. So this is of course very, very um, elegant. And we have to do this whenever we import some Cinema 4D object with assigned textures. I used uh, I used this very often, so I integrated this command as a button into my interface and just click on this. And as you can see, we've got twice as much materials and four of them are not used anymore. We can remove them. And now we have Cinema 4D, uh, sorry, V-Ray for Cinema 4D materials assigned to each of these um, objects. When I hit render again, you can see that this tree is coming with colors and alpha mapped leaves and so on. <coughs> Which is quite okay, I think. But as you can see, the rendering takes much longer now because he has to calculate all those leaves. Okay. Okay, dokily. Something is wrong with my light. But first of all, let's do one thing. When I want to clone this, and this is of course what I'm doing in the end, I don't want to have a look at the complete tree all the time because, as you might imagine, this takes really a lot of calculating time. So I switch the whole null object off. And the only thing I want to see is the roots and the trunk. So we are ready for using the cloner tool to have a multiple set of tree copies. But let me tell you in advance that this is rather risky because the cloner is producing copies via a small mouse click, but then the viewport has to handle really many, many polygons. And this might slow your viewport, viewport down rather um, crucially. So what you will do first is to assign a display tag to this root, uh, to this, uh, sorry, to this tree object and we assign this to the whole null object and it's a normal Cinema 4D display tag and in this display tag you use the shading mode lines and isopalms or even box. No, box is too simple, let's take isopalms, okay? So this makes it easier for the uh, cloner to dispatch all those copies. Okay, so keep this in mind when you forget this you will see that you have to wait very long for showing having the viewport show you the result of this cloning process. So next step as you know from this first part of my video tutorial we use the cloner tool. I have a button for this you can choose the menu um, command cloner and put the um, tree null into the cloner and just set the cloner to object mode, put the plane inside the object field, deselect align clone and decide for surface. Okay, so now as you can see we have this um, familiar look of objects dispatched on this plane and as you already know you can change the seed and look what it changes and does and so on. So in the first place we have to do something about the Y position of those trees because this plane 
as you might know, is um, the object the trees are fixed on, but they're fixed to it with their zero points, and the zero point is not at the bottom, seemingly. So we switch the cloner off, just as we did in the first part of this tutorial, and have a look at this um, tree object. So let's move to axis mode, and let's decide for a side view, and move this axis guy down a little bit in order to have the right image. We choose some position right here because we want to see some part of the roots, the root system, and let, let's see what it what it does. But the, switch the cloner on and have it rendered for a time. And it looks quite good. Okay. Well, a little bit strange, but let's stick to this. Okay, so this is the way we can dispatch our trees on this plane. But I think it's a little bit too dark, so we could do something about our camera settings. That is the lens parameters. And let's put this to, <coughs> let's say, shutter speed 50. Let's render it again, and it should be much lighter. Way too light, actually. But then again, we have leaves coming later on, so we are aware that we have to do something about the shutter speed or the f-stop, just as you want to. Good. So, now what I would like to show you, this is not V-Ray stuff, this is Cinema 4D stuff. As you can see, we have to do something about our tree constellation, because this might not be the right set arrangement we want to have, and um, there is a way to have even faster renderings, and this is done by the interactive render region, and this is achieved by pressing Alt or Option R. You can also go to the render menu and have this interactive render region, okay? So, and you might know this already, this is very, very versatile and very, very handy. First of all, you can set up a frame covering your whole image, and then you have this small arrow, and you can pull it down. And now this guy is rendering all the time. Whenever you do something, it's rendering again, and this is done really fast. So, when I go to the cloner and alter the seed count, just to see what happens, with different seed values, he's calculating the image rather fast. So to shorten things, I decided, by some reason, for a seed count of um, 84 and a tree count of 50. And this looks like this. Okay, um, so this is um, my final set of trees. It's rather dense. And there is some more stuff I showed in the first part of my video. i will just switch off my camera temporarily and get rid of my interactive render region, pressing Alt R. And as you might remember, I showed you how to confine the arrangement of cloned copies to um, a selection. And I've got a selection 2. You can have it here, select polygons. I have to switch to polygon mode, of course. And as you can see, there is some part which is not selected. And I would like to keep this area free of trees. So I click on the cloner and under object there is the selection field and I drag this um, selection tag inside this and as you can see the trees um, are gone okay so this is one thing the other thing is that I would like to impose this um, random effector again I did it in the first video I did it this in the first video this is made to 
you know, alter the appearance of those trees because up to now they are all the same. It's one original and they're looking and they're arranged in all the same direction, rotation, scaling and, and so on. And as you might remember, I just click on the random effect button in my layout or you choose menu, MoGraph menu, effect or random. And this is automatically assigned to this clone or object when this is checked before, okay? So you can see it here, right? And I would like to keep the position unchanged because this is done by seed and, and count, but scaling and rotation. And in this situation, the rotation becomes very crucial. Also the arch H, RH uh, rotation, I put this to the 360, so the random effector is turning and uh, rotating the trees inside this null to 360 degree spectrum. And here I have 5 and 5. Okay. Now you can see they are just, you know, moving around a little bit. Then the scaling, I choose uniform scale and 0 0.3. So now my trees are different in scaling too. Okay. So this is um, something um, you should always do. You know, this is rather easy, just taking one original and have it scaled and positioned and, and rotated randomly via the random effector. Okay, so let's hit render again. This looks rather nice. Now have a look on the render times, it's 13 seconds. There's one more crucial thing to check, and this is done in the cloner tool. And as I told you in my first part, you have to, you definitely have to check render instances because this makes rendering faster. And this is not so crucial having these tree trunks rendered, but later on when we want the leaves to be rendered. Okay, so I hit render again and let's see what happens, if this is faster or not. Actually, this doesn't mean a thing because, as I said, the leaves are the problem, not the trunks. Good. So, now we have a light setup and we see that this looks rather good. But when we check, for example, one of the leaves objects, like for example a leaf, we'll see that the light setup changes dramatically. And when you hit Command R to have this image rendered, you see that it will take quite a long time. Okay, so this is definitely not what we want to wait on. We just abort this, pressing Escape, and have our interactive render region again with a very low profile. We can see the render buckets growing really huge. But then again, it's rather easy to see whether the light setup looks correct and it seems to look correct. I can also do something else. I can abort this interactive render region for once and choose render region. And as you might have noticed, the leaves are the ones that take so much render time. But when I want to have a look at the ground at the, on the terrain, how this looks, I can just draw this sort of frame and have a look on my light distribution, at least on this terrain part of the image. Well, this again takes a lot of time. I don't want to wait on this. Let's take interactive render region again, but pull this thing down and crank it up a little bit. You see this interactive render region really saves you a lot of time. Still rather slow. Okay, let's try a little bit less quality. A 
Let's switch some things off. I would like to show you that there are some problems left to be solved. And I'm just waiting on this interactive render thing. So, because I wanted to tell you something. You saw the light setup was quite alright as far as the sky was concerned and the green of the leaves was quite alright, but this is way too dark. So what can we do about this? We have a tool called color mapping and I would like to show you how to make use of this. Um, for outdoor scenes they recommend you to use Reinhardt mode, Reinhardt type. Set the multiplier to 1.5 and the burn value to 0 0.5. Gamma to 2 and be sure to check linear workflow. So these are values just um, proven to be right by experience. Color mapping means color correction, light correction. You have a certain light setup which makes sense in parts of the image and you just don't want to change it because of that but then again in some other parts it might not be suitable. So color mapping uh, corrects uh, darker parts to being more lighter and um, but, uh, vice versa making two light parts a little bit darker. So these are values you might want to choose. For interiors you might want to have HSV exponential. You might know this already <coughs> actually from the normal Cinema 4D renderer because color mapping is a tool available there too. So as you can see the scene looks different. Um, the trees are very, the trunks are very very bright which has to be um, corrected later on and the, uh, the terrain is much more lighter than it was before but I think we should uh, open up uh, or uh, do something about the shutter speed of our camera because it seems to be a little bit too dark actually. So we, uh, we click on this uh, camera view ray tag and go to the lens parameters and decide for some 50, 50th second, not 100th now let's have a look at this scene again, because I want to have the terrain look rather brownish and, and well lit, not so dark, and it looks quite alright. So not, uh, now what to do about the trees? There are two things we can do. Uh, one thing is to do something about the V-Ray light. We know that the V-Ray light consists of actually two interior light sources. This is the diffuse light, which is called the physical sky, and it's one direct light which is um, the sunlight. So the sunlight is responsible for delivering these shadows which are rather nice and I want to um, have them. You know this makes it look like a summer day and we need those shadows. But then the trees in the foreground are rather bright. So why are they bright? Because um, actually the light is coming from the back of them so they shouldn't be that bright. And this is because the diffuse light from the physical sky is lightening them up from the front. Because as you might know, my camera is standing right in front of this wood scene and there are no trees behind me. And so they get the full light, full, um, they, uh, get full light from this physical sky. So we can do something about that. And this is done in the light, V-Ray light tag, sunlight tab. And here you can change the relation between the physical sun direct light and the diffuse light caused by the physical sky. And this is done by reducing the sky intensity multiplier value down to some lower value, like for example 50. And now, when you remember how those trees looked, you'll see that they are much darker now because the light coming from the front, from my camera view, caused by this physical skylight, is being reduced. This is not enough actually. We have to do some more things and um, I would like to turn to my material uh, which is used for the trunk and for the branches. And this is trunk and B1, B2, B3. These are the materials assigned to these trunk objects and roots objects. So let's have a look at the trunk material. When I double click this doesn't seem to work when I, my inter interactive render region mode is on, so I just switch it off for a moment. Alt R, Option R, and then double click on this material. 
and in the diffuse layer I mm, replace the oh it's already done replace my bitmap by a layer you can just do it by choosing layer instead of bitmap and then you have access to this layer <coughs> potential stacking noises shaders and effects on one to uh, on one another and this is the bitmap and I put some brightness contrast gamma around it and I reduce the gamma to 0.6 okay so it gets darker do the same with the other materials. This is the same material, but this is a different one. I do the same thing here. Here you can see this is just a bitmap, and I replace this bitmap by a layer, clicking on this icon and choosing the same <coughs> gamma correction for this one. Okay, then the roots, because we see the roots actually, but maybe the material is the same. It is the same. Okay, so. Now I choose interactive render region again, and as you can see, the trees look a little bit more darker. Okay, this is basically it for the ground. Now I would like to have the leaves rendered, but before I'm doing this, you might already anticipate that this will take a rather huge amount of render time. You can do some things. And um, we sampled down the render quality, we uh, switched off ambient occlusion, we sampled down adaptive, uh, no, the anti-aliasing mode, we sampled down the DMC sampler itself. So what is left to do? So you might know from Cinema 4D that you can use, uh, use compositing tags and via the compositing tags for assigning um, assigned to some objects, you can decide that these objects um, take less precision in calculating GI, like for example the leaves. Uh, when I assign a V-Ray compositing tag, which is basically the same as the Cinema 4D compositing tag, I can do some things um, having an impact on the way these leaf object is rendered. Okay, so for example, you can say it shouldn't be visible to the camera, but of course we want to have it visible for the camera, and it should of course generate GI because basically in the world the green leaves are generating GI, colored light, green light, so this is basically something we definitely want to have. But what we don't want to have is that precision generate GI, receive GI, okay. Um, this is the amount, so we won't change anything about this too, but there is some miscellaneous properties. And this is the GI quality multiplier, and you can set this down to 0 0.1. Because, you know, it is certainly not much of a difference if the precision of GI calculation of a leaf is um, the same as for other objects in the scene, or if it's lower. And I'm think I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure about that it's not that important so we can sample this down to 0 0.1 okay you could do this for the trunks too let's see if this makes a difference um, V-Ray bridge tag V-Ray compositing we could actually copy just this one tag we already assigned okay So, how do I do this? I just press Command or Control and drag it one way up and have everything calculated a little bit faster. Hopefully. Hmm. So, let's move this render region up to the, tr uh, to the leaves. Oh, this was a mistake. And let's have a look how the leaves look. <coughs> so let me talk about some some minor stuff of minor importance. I know that this is alright for my final rendering because we don't need all of the leaves prov provided with this ready-made tree. We've got a leaf object um, delivering one set of leaves and we, we've got another one delivering a second set of leaves and as you can see it gets much more dense and there's no light coming through these leaves at all so 
for my final rendering, I left this leaf B. I didn't just didn't render it. Then again, we have stuff around those roots. This is um, some leaves and, and some some shrubby stuff, you know, which makes it look rather realistic. So we just switch it off. And as you might know, you can press Alt to um, have those buttons changing simultaneously, and can also pressing Alt and just painting on these points to make them visible too. Okay, so the thing is just to keep render times short. This is what you have to do all the time, as you can see. And now I would like to stop this whole process. I think we're done and we can have a final rendering and I'm showing you how I transformed my parameters again to just have it rendered as fast as possible. This looks quite nice, doesn't it? <laughs> okay, so what did I do? You know, we are done, basically. You can fiddle around hours with scenes like this. But then again, this is just an exercise. This was meant to show you that you can have a real small wood consisting of 3D trees. So this is what I wanted to show you. I didn't want to show you how to make this look perfect. But then again, you might get some special own ideas of how to make use of the cloner tool and the random tool and stuff like that, and that you can make use of the ability to just have several objects in one cloner object. You can copy this EU19A and disable or enable different kinds of objects inside this null object. So you have a mixture of um, trees with different complexity. But I won't uh, focus on that now because this video is growing too long anyway. So we're just stopping it here. There's just one last thing I wanted to talk about um, before I um, go into my final rendering, and this is the kind of um, texture the leaves are made of. You know, this, um, as you can see, the light is coming through those leaves, and the leaves itself are not transparent. They've got no transparent material. So what do we do to have the light shine through them? And this is done via the two-sided material inside V-Ray. And I'll show you this in another sample scene. And this is here. And when you hit render, you see a, a leaf created by a alpha mapped material assigned to this plane. And this alpha mapping is done in the material weight channel. And this image is just masking this uh, geometry. So what you can do, you can have a V-ray two side material and assign this to the um, plane object. And first of all, it is nothing. See, it's just nothing. But you can um, mix different materials inside the parameters tab. There's front side material and back side material. And you can take this leaf material outside the material editor, material manager, sorry, and have those materials on the front side, back side, and then it looks different, like the light is coming through this leaf. Especially here you can see it's, it looks uh, like, you know, as if light is inside this object too. And this is of course rather crucial for my scene because we need this kind of material, not just getting light from some GI reflections, but also giving the impression that light from the sky in back of this, uh, behind the sleeves, is coming through those leaves. And this is rather easily done. This is my scene, and I can just you know, define the same kind of two-side material. Replace my leaf, oops, my leaf textures, leaf and leaf B, by this two-sided materials, just by drawing it onto this tag, the same here. And then I double-click this and replace not, not replace, but draw the original leaf material inside these two fields. This is it. And this is the result, a much more, a much brighter curtain-like look of my leaf. 
arrangement. Okay, so this is all I wanted to tell you about arranging 3D trees, keeping control over the render times in the test phase, knowing the right adjustments to do when lightness is not correct and you know color mapping stuff like that. I hope you liked it. So now let's stick to the render settings again. Get rid of this interactive renderer just to make sure that you remember those things correctly. We want a final render quality so that means we have to get adaptive DMC for anti-aliasing again reduce the DMC or enhance the DMC sample to 0 0.01. This was the default value. Indirect illumination, we sampled down the even, the very, the, the very um, low quality render preset, very fast auto. Even more so, we get back to this preset again to have at least this, um, you know, standard quality, very fast auto. And in general, we keep sure that ambient occlusion is checked again. It is. This is part of the preset. Okay, so this is um, all we should do. We can check the output again at 600 by 600. And this is the result, what I had from this. And this took the renderer in my MacBook Pro. This took the renderer one hour and 10 minutes. And I didn't do anything else, so uh, this was um, I think the maximum speed I could have. So one hour and ten minutes for these 600 by 600 um, pixel rendering and this is not perfect at all. So as you can see rendering 3D um, tree scenery is not very, you know, it's not a fast job. And what you might think is that you use three-dimensional trees only in foreground scenery and not in backgrounds because in backgrounds you can still very easily uh, stick to billboards. I'm describing how to use, make use of billboards always facing the camera. Two-dimensional um, planes just resembling trees and not being real 3D trees to, you know, crowd the background of your image. But then again, this was a, a huge fun to do this and I hope you liked it and hope you get some special own ideas to try on it. Have a look at the XFROG page to look for ready-made XFROG plants and trees and stuff like that. Okay, hope you liked my first video in 2012 and there's more to come and see you next time. Bye!